Hi guys, today's lesson is for National 5 Fashion and Textiles and today we are focusing on embellishment techniques, so how you decorate pieces of fabric and today's lesson is about appliques. So first of all to give you an explanation of what an applique is, an applique is when you decorate another piece of fabric, it's a technique used where you are stitching on smaller pieces of fabric onto larger pieces to create a design. So a wee example for you here, I've managed to find this cushion, it's a rather old one, but you can see here we've got little designs that have been stitched on in a contrast fabric. Okay, so that is an applique and it's entirely up to you how creative and how skilled you feel when it comes to creating your own design. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so to make a simple uh, applique design, what you're going to need is your piece of fabric that you're going to stitch your applique onto. So I'm just using a scrap piece at the moment. Um, you're going to need your pieces of fabric that you're creating your design out of. I'm using little bits of felt that I have lying around, but you could also use some older pieces of fabric, or some clothing that you were wanting to recycle or rather than throwing them out, you could cut those up and that would be a good way to practice or to create a design out of something existing. You're then going to need obviously your, your fabric scissors for cutting out your design. I've got a pencil here and I think I mentioned in a previous video about using an air erase pen or pencil. This is something that draws onto the fabric but disappears over time. Okay so that's quite good for drawing on your design and cutting your shapes out of. And then you're going to need something to bond the fabric to itself. So this is a double-sided adhesive. I've got two types here. This is what you call Bondo Web. It's a very papery fabric called a non-woven fabric because you can see it would just tear and stretch. Um, people buy this for sticking up their hems if they're not able to sew it. Or you can buy this Bondo Web that comes back with paper so this is quite good for drawing out your design onto the paper but then you would peel off the paper to give you your bondo web um, double-sided adhesive okay so it's important that you need that you get that to stick your your fabric onto your main fabric okay um, I'm also going to show you a little technique with blanket stitching. So we're building on our previous lesson with the hand embroidery. So that's why I've got my bit of embroidery thread there as well. We'll come back to that later on though. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so you can see now what I've done is I have drawn around my fabric. I've used my pencil or my erase pen to create my shapes and I've cut that out. I've also cut the same shape out in the Bondo web on the paper. Um, bearing in mind this is a paper, so you would need to use your paper scissors for cutting out the paper because paper blunts fabric scissors. Okay, so you're mirroring each shape and then once you've created each shape, what you're then going to do is start to build up your design onto your main piece of fabric. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is peel off the paper and place that down onto my main fabric. I can then position where I want my shape to be. Okay, I would then take that to the ironing board and using a piece of greaseproof paper over the top to protect your fabric, press that on. The heat is what melts the glue that's on the both sides of this Bondo web and that's what's going to adhere your fabric to your main piece. Okay, so then I would start to create the rest of my design with that piece going on and then my final shape on there. Okay, I wonder if you can tell what it's going to be yet. Okay, so take that to the ironing board and press that in place and then we're ready to sew. Alright guys, so you can see here what I've done now is I have used the iron and I've bonded the pieces of fabric to the main piece there so that's not going to lift at all and I've done it on all three sections but before I put down my ladybird I created a stitch line to enhance my design here okay and I've picked a similar color thread to be able to do that so what I'm going to do now is to secure all of these edges down so that, so that they don't start to lift and I'm going to do a zigzag stitch around the edge here 
and then I'm going to show you how to do a blanket stitch around the edge of the leaf here. All right, so I've set my machine up on a zigzag stitch and I want my stitches to be fairly close together. So that's when I have controlled the stitch length. I've brought the stitch length down and I've also controlled how deep I want my zigzags to be. I don't want them to be too big given the size of my design here. So I'm going to start off by using the balance wheel, dropping my needle in. And you can see hopefully there that that is right on the very edge of the ladybird's body. So when I come to sew, the needle should hop over to the inside there and there shouldn't be any red visible on the green part of the leaf. So I'm going to take my time here and because I'm going around a corner, I'm going to have to be very careful to position my needle carefully. So take my time all the way around. And if you're unsure at any point about where your needle's going to land, then stop and use the balance wheel. Okay, I've not committed to that stitch yet. I could lift the needle out and reposition if I wanted. Okay, and again, if I'm not sure about the corner, I could lift the presser foot and turn the body off the ladybird round. All the time, I'm just making sure that my needle is just landing to the outside of the red. Now rather than doing a reverse stitch over this, I'm just going to continue over my zigzag stitches for about a centimetre and that's going to secure them in place. Okay, so I'm now going to lift the needle out, trim my threads And you can see there, my ladybird's body is not going to come away from the main fabric because it's completely adhered and sewn down in place. Okay, so I'm now going to go very carefully, probably with a smaller stitch around the head of the ladybird, and then I'm going to come back on and stitch on the circles. Right guys, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stitch around the ladybird's head now. Because this is a smaller piece, it's a bit trickier so I'm going to adjust my stitch length so that it's a bit smaller. My zigzags, I want them to be closer together and um, maybe not so spiky as well. So to do that on my machine here you can see I've got my digital um, plus or minus. I want to bring my stitches closer together so at the moment they, are, they were sitting on 2.5. I'm going to bring that down to a 2 and my zigzag height I'm going to bring down to a 2.5. So let's see how that works now. Again, position my needle exactly on the corner of where I want my applique to start and that looks like that's going to be a good stitch length for me but I am going to have to manually turn my fabric as I go because it's quite a tight corner here. Because it's the black thread I'm working with then what we're going to see is the black thread. If I make a mistake then we'll see the black thread on the green Okay, and then here I want to do a little reverse because I'm not catching over the beginning of the stitches. Okay. Now I could probably do a little bit of ad-libbing here and put this back down to a straight stitch. So for me being a digital machine, I want this to be on a number one. So if I put this back to number one and my stitch length put it an 8. What I'm going to do is just give my ladybird a couple of little straight stitch antennae. Okay, and we'll do the same on this side. Oh, 
Okay, so a couple of different stitch types there on the sewing machine. We've used the zigzag stitch to secure our um, applique onto the main fabric and again around the head. And then we've got some decorative straight stitches there that are just showing the detail of the leaf and of the ladybird's antennae. Okay, so I've completed my design now and with the zigzag stitch securing on the bigger circle, I've then done a small straight stitch around the circles there on a very small stitch to secure the ladybird's dots. Now ideally you'd have a little French knot in at the eyes here, um, but I have run out of black embroidery thread. So what I am going to show you is how to do a blanket stitch around the outside here. So this is a hand embroidery stitch. So I've chosen a green. And I've put a knot in the end of my thread. Now, it's always a little bit tricky getting started with the, with the blanket stitch. And I'm not using the hoop now, but I can feel where I want my needle to be. Right, so I'm going to evenly space my stitches about a centimetre apart. And a centimetre down in length. If you're working with felt, then you'll start to see felt is actually quite a difficult fabric to work uh, to work with. It's quite difficult to get the needle through it. Right, so what I need to be doing now is coming up and over and down at an angle. So you can see there I've created a stitch coming up. And then what I want to do is loop it underneath this will start to come clear in a second okay so it's pulled it pulled the stitch at an angle here it is always a bit tricky when you get started like that but with so what I'm going to do is take the needle in underneath this top thread. Okay. And then come down at an angle, so about 45 degrees, in through the felt and back up just at the side of the felt. Okay. And then hook that over the needle so it's secured at a right angle. Okay, so again, into the felt, diagonally down and up. Okay, so it's creating a ladder effect. Okay, so I'm coming at a 45 degree angle diagonally from where it came out into the felt out through the side. And securing at the edge. Okay, we're going to go all the way around doing that. And then that's where I can correct this first stitch here. All right, guys, so that is your basic applique there. So what we've covered today is another embellishment technique, appliqueing. I've discussed what that is and the types of tools that you might need to create your own. I've also gone into a little bit more of the hand stitching and shown you how to do a blanket stitch to finish that off as well. Okay, so see how you get on yourselves at home. Remember to leave any feedback and like and subscribe. Thanks very much, guys, bye.